Here we're diving into different levels of freight car detail. It's kind of cool, I think, going into a previously done model by another modeler. Like this Suline SD40-2, created by Bob Rivard. We're going to add LEDs, DCC, and sound as you guys enjoy this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Today we're going to cover uh, modeling. And I know some people are like, yeah, we already covered modeling. I'm actually going to dive into the artistry of it. Uh, it's taking a basic car that doesn't have a whole lot to it, add weathering, or put on grabs, uh, or a locomotive, the same type of thing. I know locomotives can be intimidating. Uh, we will cover that SD4-2 number 762. I recently acquired that model from uh, Bob Rivard. He's a local modeler here in the Twin Cities. And um, this particular piece, it's, it's fantastic. He's done a lot of upgrades to it, which we'll cover here in this episode. But I'm going to just take it to the next level. We're going to take the internal, put in the DCC, put in the sound, clean it up a little bit on the exterior, and just get it all up to, up to par uh, and be able to roll it with the rest of the locomotives I've got. Now, with that said, maybe you don't want to dive into locomotives, and you're going to look at freight cars. Very basic or area to start would be, like in this case, a 40-foot boxcar. That's an Accurail right out of the box. Nothing really done to it. Put it together, put it on the rails. Here's a roundhouse or an Athern. Same thing, build it, put it together, put it on the rails, but this time it's got a wash on it. It's got a simple wash of um, acrylic and water. So it just at least knocks down the brightness of that red. And to take it a little bit further, I'd done a custom paint probably 15, 20 years ago of a Great Northern car. And I was looking at some photos and thought, that'd be cool. So I started that, I stripped a car, and I painted it up into that scheme. Now granted, I'm selling these particular cars. Um, from a standard standpoint, as I've evolved as a modeler, I've liked the finer um, scale. So like in this case, here's an MNS 40 foot. That It's a KD car that I stripped. And um, now I went through and I added the panels on the top. And you know I thought from the photo, it looked like they might have been a, a replacement panels. I've had some guys tell me, oh, they're um, you know, a fiberglass panel that let light into the box car, which I know the Pond Black cars, the Sioux Line 50 foots, they had them as an experimental phase. And if that's what that is, that's what it's representing. Um, I'm not really sure. I was just working off a photo and I could tell that there was a discoloration up in the roof. So that's what I did. Is it right? I don't know. Am I worried about it? No. Um, somebody else worried about it? Maybe, but I don't care. At the end of the day, modeling is about what you want to do and how you want to take it to the next step. So if it is just a simple box car like this and you're like, love it, just the way it is. I like the colors, you know, I'm not going to do anything to it. Great. You want to weather it? Great. You want to add details? Great. You want to go to a KD level, super detailed? Great. Whatever it might be, you got to find kind of that niche. Um, if you're just starting out, maybe you start with one of these types of cars to get a feel for it and you're a little intimidated with an exact rail car or um, somebody that has super fine detail. It's all a starting point. You got to get there somehow. I've done it with a lot of repetition and practice. And with that, you're only going to get there too if you do it as well. So with that said, we're going to dive into that SD40-2, take it over to the workbench, and uh, we'll get it together. All right, here we are at the workbench, and uh, I've already just dropped the couplers off. They were removed before, but and the, the screw that's holding the actual shell on. Now, it's kind of cool, I think, going into a previously done model by another modeler. It's just because you see how all this stuff is done. Now, obviously, you can see it's a traditional Atherin motor. It does have lights in it, and he's used um, some diodes to be able to do uh, some lighting up above. He's got number boards. Uh, there's a couple of weights down in there. Uh, I'm going to remove all this, then we're going to start into getting the whole thing kind of redone. But first, we'll be looking at the shell itself. We'll dive into it right now. All right, there we go. It's all emptied out, and we've got the shell here. I'm going to go um, wash this up. We're just going to clean off a little bit of the, the grit and grime and kind of focus on the remainder of this project. All right, we're back from the wash rack. I went through uh, with a little bit of detergent and water and got uh, the shell cleaned up the best I could. And then I also went through the actual trucks. I took them all apart, lubricated the gears, and I actually replaced a couple of the gears because they had excess flashing on some of these that made a little bit of noise when it rolled. So now they both roll nice and smooth. And the rest of the powertrain that I went through, you'll notice I have a gold motor in there. I took out this particular motor that was. And they also went through and insulated it. So it's got the isolated ready for DCC. You got This normally would touch the bottom of your frame that gets the power from the actual truck and with that said if you wired it up and you had this touch in your frame and you put it onto a DCC board you're gonna have issues so it had to be isolated 
This, um, it has actually an isolation underneath and it's screwed now instead of pressed on with the rubber mounting pieces that you've got there. And I also then changed out the worm gear. The worm gear is now a nylon worm gear versus the brass version. And then the other thing that you notice is this brass version, they used to have a dog bone that had the ball joint and used to kind of hook them up like that. And they'd eventually connect together and this would obviously go into the motor. Now they have a hexagon style. So this hexagon style inside of here, um, it just slides in, but this one is too short for what I need. And I'm just gonna order up some SD40-2 dog bones. So we'll be able to get that taken care of. But then in addition to what I've looked at here, if we look at the details, so outside the mechanical part that I just replaced, I did also remove these top two tabs, by the way. There's two tabs that go across. Normally there was a metal bar that came across and made contact with those. Since I'm putting in speakers and I've got other stuff for DCC coming in here, I want to make sure that I got as much room inside the shell uh, and the cab that I uh, can have possible. So with that said, I want to just look at the details and the stuff that Bob had done. He milled back the frame, so he cut out this big chunk of metal that was here. He modified this portion here and here, which allows his couplers now to fit in nicely. And if you look at the underside of this, little modifications on both ends for his couplers. And that just gives clearance. With that said, uh, looking at the actual chassis itself, that's the most he had done for the modification on the actual metal chassis. Moving on to the shell, a lot of cool things I think that he had done was adding the horn, put it above the engineer's side, which is um, notorious for the Sioux line. He also had a beacon on there, which I did pop off, and I am going to actually replace with one of these strobe beacons. You can get them from Athern. Um, this is more prototypical to what the uh, Sioux line used, but they had a lot of different versions, so it's not to say that this style that, that Bob had on here wouldn't have done, but I just thought it would be kind of cool to put on that other style. He did add the winterization window, a winterization hatch, uh, the chicken wire grill, as well as the eyelets. There's eyelets that have been added throughout the top of the locomotive. So those little details are all kind of cool across the top of the engine. But as you went down and look at like the handrails and the grabs on the ends, he's got individual grabs everywhere. And the handrail in the end, he does have a solid section across. Now most, if you look at your SD4-2s, have a chain there. Um, so it's cool that he noted that it needed to be a solid bar all the way across. He did add the plow, uh, the plow that's here. Uh, and I did pop out the windows. I'm just going to clean them up a little bit. They got a little bit of paint on them, which is, you know, understood with a little bit of overspray. And when you're custom painting something, that'll happen. So I'm going to clean those up a little bit. We're going to get those back in. Um, we're not going to do that right now because I ordered up a few parts that I, uh, I'm going to install into this. And we're going to have to wait a few days. So you guys don't have to wait. You'll see it in just a second here. But uh, we'll tune back in in just a moment. All right, so a few of the items have arrived so far. It took about a week. Uh, for you guys, it took just a couple seconds, so thanks for the patience. I did uh, do a few of the updates already, and I'll walk through those. One of them was a lift kit. I wanted to be able to elevate the locomotive so it rides high, but uh, not really. I just wanted to put in uh, a couple of bars just to hold it up so the couplers aren't sitting on the trip pin. So that's why I did that. Bob had previously clipped couplers, and I used the actual KD trip pin with magnets. So I wanted to make sure that those didn't sit and push the thing up because there is a custom coupler box in there. On the drivetrain itself, I did put the dog bone in. And the dog bone that I ordered up here, there's the part number. It comes in a pack of six, which is overkill. Uh, but it was able to address my problem that I had here. And that was just bridging the gap between the flywheel and the worm gear. Now, you do want to make sure that you get the rear. That's what is important because they do sell a front and the front is a little too long and it would go too far into the flywheel. I didn't actually order one, but I did notice that when I was looking them up online. I did do the wheels. The wheels are uh, a nickel plated. Again, this is from Athern. They already have all the uh, the gears on them, but I figured if I was doing the motor and I was doing the drivetrain, I might as well just go right down to the rails and update the wheels as well. So it was a six pack of wheels for an SD40-2 or just locomotives. Uh, and that's the part number there. So if anybody's doing some of these updates, um, you'll know what pieces I'm using and you can order them up yourself or find alternative solutions. So that's the drivetrain, but I am gonna do the LEDs. And the LEDs that I'm using here, this is a comment that Bob had made. He says he just ordered them online. There's 25 of them in here. I have all the resistors. The gentleman even threw in a free ladder. So it's kind of cool in that regard. Well, it's seven bucks to be able to order up. That's shipped to your door, uh, everything that you'd need. And this is the gentleman that I actually had contacted. Now, realize that you don't have to uh, use all these different people. I'm not plugging these people. I'm not getting paid by them. I don't even know who John is, uh, other than the guy that sent me these LEDs. 
but uh, as I gather information, I'm just sharing it with you. And one of the other things that I did learn um, from Bob was using the fiber optics and filaments for putting in my headlights. I'm just trying all this stuff out. I have I did one for my dad on a Great Northern SD45 and it looked great. So I'm looking forward to putting it into these uh, particular units. There is shrink tubing that is a perfect size of the actual size of this LED. So it slides right over that. You'd actually slide your filament through there, shrink it down, and then run your actual LED uh, or filament rather up into the lenses. Now you see these have a funny little bulbous end. I'll show you exactly what that is. And it is the fiber optic. Here's a, I want to say there's five feet. What we're looking at is that end. If you look at that end, one is bulbous, one is not. This is the way it comes out of the package. If you hold up a lighter to this, it actually melts it and creates this lens. It is fantastic. The size of it is almost exact to the size of the lens of a locomotive. You can obviously just slide that in there, have that as your locomotive headlight, and it'll look real nice. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. That is what I'm going to put into this unit. The last thing I had here was actually a speaker. So I'm going to put in the speaker. Now this was a comment shared to Bob by a gentleman named Dennis Barthol. Now he does loke sound installs on brass locomotives, uh, particularly steam, and they sound amazing. I'm not just plugging him um, to toot his horn, I'm just telling you exactly what I think about the actual job that he does. I had him do an SDL 39 for me and it sounds fantastic. Now, this idea was shared uh, to Bob, and Bob actually just shared it to me, because I'm going to try this out. It's an iPhone speaker. You can get uh, a handful of these online for a very um, inexpensive price, and I'm going to drop it into this unit right like this here. So you'll see that the speaker will go down in there. Bob did add weights in here, and that's why I went. This is a thinner style speaker. I can just drop that in, and it still is going to clear my drivetrain. So that'll be kind of nice. But that's what I'm going to install. I'm going to put in a wall sound decoder, and um, we'll kind of go from there. Hopefully you're enjoying this upgrade of this SD40-2. If there are ever any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this episode. All right, we continue the upgrade on this particular SD40-2. One of the things I've done now here is added the visor. I did add the beacon on here. I did put the LED light with the fiber optic lenses. I did upgrade the windows because I was cleaning the windows off and didn't like how they had turned out, so I actually put in this set of uh, Run 8 Productions. It's an older set. This company I don't believe is in uh, business any longer. But if you do run across them, they do make these uh, the vacuum sealed or window that you're able to put into the the unit, and they look nice for what they are. And again, the uh, the beacon that I replaced was the Athern style strobe, and uh, I did put in the Wow Sound decoder, which uh, this particular one I used was a Wow kit. It's an ATH-11. And these kits actually have the decoder, the motherboard, they have keep alives on them, they have resistors for LED lights, uh, as well as the speaker. I did put a um, iPhone speaker in this particular unit, uh, which we can take a listen to here in just a moment. But yeah, the sound is great. I, I mean, I like it. It's good enough for me. I don't turn the volumes up really loud, so it's not going to be incredibly loud on the uh, the video here. If I have you know a handful of units running. I think I put three engines together. The three collectively make enough uh, noise as it is. So. Some people like them loud, some people like them quiet, some people don't like sound at all. So with that said, we'll fire it up, let you take a look at the uh, beacon. The beacon itself has a LED under it that uh, came from Evans uh, LEDs, and it's an online source. Uh, they're called Picos, which P-I-C-O. The LED is tiny, but uh, it works great for this application because the Sioux line has their beacon mounted right above the number board. So uh, without uh, any more rambling here, we'll fire this thing up and we'll roll out. Roll out! Thanks for watching this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. I look forward to future episodes. Take care.